from his work called City of God. Uh, it's a, something I've been working on for almost three years. Next month will be three years. And I've been sandbagging and archiving and not really sharing it with anyone. It's been burning like a wedding ring in my pocket because uh, it's a beautiful story. Uh, I had a, a good friend give me the opportunity to go down to Brazil. Susanna Gordon, she has Susanna Gordon Designs here in town over at uh, the uh, Snyder Plaza. She's an amazing jeweler. What's even amazing about her is she started doing this when she was a teenager in Rio de Janeiro. And since has built an incredible business for herself. And what's incredible about it is she's creating macro economies with women who are living in Rio de Janeiro as she sends precious and semi-precious stones down there, equipping them with the tools and the relationship to change their reality. I had first learned about Rio de Janeiro from a movie called City of God. And to me, it's a movie that God made. It's beautiful cinematography. It got me all drawn into this place that had so much beauty and culture there. And when I had heard that I had an opportunity to go there, I was like, this is like going to, almost like going to Egypt for myself. You know, I was so thrilled. I arrived not knowing what to expect. I learned uh, right away that the, the place was the most beautiful place I'd ever been to, and I got to travel quite a bit, you know. It has a 900 foot Jesus up there on the mountain. You can't lose sight of it. it has Copacabana in the bay, and uh, then I also would notice up on the hills, they had all these houses stacked up on top of each other. And I'd only seen it in the movie. And I'd seen some stuff on news when they talk about other places that have zero lot line poverty experiences. But, and I'd seen homelessness in Dallas, you know, and some other places, but I'd never seen anything like this. It was, if it wasn't the first or the second day, I was walking on the beach and uh, there's a few people that were sitting underneath a big umbrella that you would use on a, like a patio furniture, but they converted it into their house. And uh, so the guy had some dreadlocks and had a cool look to him and had my camera and a lens I had rented from here in town. And so I went up to him and I don't know Portuguese. And so uh, I make friends pretty easy. So I looked at him and I said, hey, I take your photograph like that. So he said, sure, and he goes up like this. And when he gets up, I don't know if you remember Fraggle Rock, but they had the <laughs> Fraggle Rock eaters, like the, he was kind of seaweed, you know? <laughs> and so after I shot it, what's great about digital cameras is I could turn around and go and show him. And he just took the camera from me and was like this. And I thought, all right, I found my guy, you know? And then one of his friends translated, and I said, can we meet here tomorrow? And we did. And, uh, it, uh, it took a while for me to get used to not knowing how to speak to somebody and uh, taking the risk. You know, a leopard doesn't lose his spots overnight. I'm getting ahead of myself when I say that. This guy had been living on the beach for 19 years. His name is Hugo or Hugo Galacios. Can I say his last name? Elias Dos Santos. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and so he left home when he was nine. Not unlike thousands and thousands of other boys every year in Rio de Janeiro. And he had survived it much longer than the life expectancy for one of those boys. He was still connected to that reality because he had a lot of these boys that were sleeping in those green boxes that hold all the electricity power that are over by the street lights. They have large units there and because of the, the machinery, it, it warms up at night, and kind of creates like a little. And so he's like their uncle, slaps him around come running up to him, but he had made it. And uh, so he's making some jewelry and stuff, still you know, jacking around. I wanted to be able to go back and uh, visit him because we ended up, while I was there, sponsoring him with a camera so he could have a part of ownership of this project. And the project was is to go to places that we're normally not allowed to go to. And my first trip, I wasn't allowed to go because my hair was like yours. It was all short, had my glasses, I was 100% gringo, you know? And the taxi that I had taken and the driver that we had would not allow me to go up four blocks inside the favela. He was like, nah. -uh. And that's how he communicated that we're not going. 
So uh, later I found out that they had kidnapped a photographer from Holland, and that's in the same neighborhood I was trying to go to. And so that's how this first trip started. So I grew my hair a little bit more and came back the second trip. And same place, Hugo's, is there on the beach. And so we get serious about this camera thing, and I find a camera shop in town, knows English, and is allowing him to take the memory card out of this camera to them. They have my address, and they burn CDs, and they're sending them to the U.S. for me. And so every month, we were able to send him some money so he could continue to have what he needed. And plus, he was starting getting serious about making some art. He was like, he saw my iPod overnight in the hotel room. He's like, here, let me see it. You know, or he didn't say that. And he said, oh my God, I'll put a bang, you know, whatever. <laughs> and then he takes the, the iPod from me and he makes a little leather iPod holder. And when I woke up, he had made me a wallet. And he's really crafty and he's doing all this cool stuff. And I was like, wow, it'd be really cool if I took that stuff back to the States and be able to sell that stuff to this guy and help him out. And we made a commitment with him when I was working for a Lutheran missionary group that, uh, that we would work with the guy and uh, give him some equipment to be able to go. And he's, he lit up, kind of like I do when I get to take photographs. It's the most amazing thing that's happened to me in my life. It's given me a purpose and makes me really happy. And guess what? Just because he doesn't speak English, he's from somewhere else. It doesn't mean it's exclusively happening to me. It happened to this guy. He went crazy. And it was almost like we we're in competition. <laughs> Third trip down there, he's editing my photos. No good. No good. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking at magazines together. <laughs> And he's critiquing my work. <laughs> and he was taking it serious. And he didn't want to be a part, because I told him my story, because I had been in a, in a situation, uh, you know, I'd been on the streets. And I, I had experienced a new life because of doing photography. And so, uh, it wasn't a phenomenon to me, it was something that was real, you know, this guy. Fourth trip, we go down and uh, he's met a girl, she's pregnant, and uh, she's going to have his first son. And he's 60 pounds heavier. He is. He drives a car now. He drives a car now. <laughs> and he had a house an hour outside the city. And, uh, but he met me there at the airport and uh, wanted to take me to his house. And he was really proud of it. I was too. And uh, when we went back into town, some people were like, Ugo, hey! You know, but he was explaining that that's not his life anymore. And that really, really touched me, you know? And he can make whatever choices he decided to make, but he was making the choices to make a change in a fatalistic society. You know, one's like, if you're born into this, you're born into this, this is what's going to happen. And so, uh, fifth trip, I go down there, and my godson, is uh, one month old, 30 days old. He turned one year on May 16th, just a few days ago. And uh, what we've done in these trips going down there is we've also brought a camera. I said we had my best friend from childhood go down there with me and we did a two camera shoot interviewing Hugo, interviewing his family, being able to have access up into the favelas. We went and did Carnival in 2006 and it was Amazing. What was really cool is these people were arriving by horses and they were arriving by Mercedes, but when they got out there and they did the deal, they were all the same. He told me that was the best part of it. And it, 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 it's just a really beautiful place. Uh, and this guy's inspired me. Uh, Susanna inspired me to, to continue to, I want to learn Portuguese now. <laughs> Be able to continue to work with this guy. So basically, he was living on the beach for 19 years. Now he's got a one-year-old, and his life's turned around, and he's experiencing the power of serving others halfway around the world. And uh, it's kind of a mirror image of what we were wanting to do here in Dallas, but it's easier to talk about social issues that are separate from us. It's easier to talk about a New Orleans or a New York or a or uh, Brazil or something versus, but I'm trying to build some parallels and I want to introduce this show in this city uh, and then take it to some other places and then get back to uh, hosting other, other artists doing their work here.